The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 2930 in the name of Fulton MacGregor on Walk This Way at Dunbeth Park. I'm intrigued. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Fulton MacGregor to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr MacGregor. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to first of all thank colleagues who supported this motion and those who have decided to stay and speak in the debate tonight. I know that um, Ruth Maguire will, uh, for the SNP, mention other initiatives uh, in her constituency area on the, the topic. Graeme mm -hmm. Simpson for the Tories, who has taken the time out to come and speak to me about the debate. And I'm also delighted to say that Elaine Smith, a fellow Cope Bridger, um, and quite fittingly, uh, has also um, decided to speak in the debate. And I say quite fittingly because um, Dunbeth Park's an area to the east of um, Coat Bridge, um, towards the, the border. And I grew up in an area on one side of the park, and Elaine uh, is from an area on the other. So I think that's actually uh, very, very uh, fitting. And I think what these debates should be all about. I'm pleased to be able to bring this subject to the Chamber today, especially on the 20th anniversary of Paths for All. And for those who aren't familiar with the charity, I know the Minister will speak a wee bit more about it. But they are an organisation who are devoted to encouraging and promoting walking in all communities across Scotland. I'd like to take the opportunity again to congratulate the staff and students at the Coat Bridge campus of New College Lanarkshire on the recent Student Association unveiling of their Walk This Way walking routes at Dunbeth Park, eh, as I said, which is in the constituency, and of course welcome them eh, to the, the Chamber today. I hope that the creation of these paths eh, will encourage even more people in Coat Bridge and the wider community to enjoy the park. And I've said already, this uh, was my local park when I was growing up, and I still use it regularly. And, and to go around it normally is about uh, just over a kilometre, so um, I thought I would uh, uh, use the, uh, the routes, the, the mile routes as put in by the students, and uh, yeah, it, was, it was more challenging doing it that way. Although the motion makes mention of Dunbeth Park, it would be unfair for me not to mention other great places to walk in my constituency. I mainly post-industrial heartland. Some people from out with the area are often surprised to learn about the quite stunning walks, eh, such as Drumbellier Country Park, known as the Locks locally, or Gap Corsh Nature Reserve. Or you could walk along the old eh, Monkland Canal going through Summer Lee Heritage Park. And I would encourage anyone listening eh, to come and visit the area. And I'm sure Elaine would back me up on that. We'll do a wee tourist eh, information. It's, it's undeniable the positive impact walking can have on health, both physical and mental. And it's something that a lot of people, although important to remember, not everyone can take part in eh, as it's free and accessible for all ages. People can go walking themselves with a the dog or with their, their family. And walking has major health benefits and studies have shown that regular walking alone has been shown to reduce risk of chronic illness, including heart disease, type 2 diabetes, stroke and some cancers. A community group in my constituency who have taken all of this on board are Muirhead District and Seniors Forum. In addition to keeping uh, local residents in the 55 plus age bracket up to date with community, local authority and national information, the Forum in July this year set up a walking group. Financial assistance was provided by Age Scotland, allowing the group to get started. And the group now averaged 15 with three trained group leaders heading out along various routes twice a month at various levels of difficulties. The group leaders explore potential routes for suitability. A Cafe, I'm told, is an essential requirement as the main purpose of the group is to combat loneliness uh, within the community. And another local group that I would like to mention based in the constituency is the St Monica's Ramblers. The club was formed 25 years ago and since then have dedicated themselves to organising walks every fortnight. Members are primarily from Coatbridge but come from across Lanarkshire uh, with members of all ages. And, uh, and there's, I've had some contact with the Ramblers this week and there's truly something for everyone with everything from sca scaling rows uh, to more local walks and a really, really inclusive group. And um, I, I, I'd agreed when I was speaking to the, the, the Ramblers group this week to, to maybe go um, a walk with them at some point this year. But looking on their website at some of the walks that they undertake, I bet I'd get into training fast. Now, uh, if there's somebody else I don't mention when talking about walking, it won't go down well in the, the McGregor family home. And, I might even get um, de-invited for Christmas dinner um, because my uh, dad and mum are avid walkers. My dad is a self-proclaimed Monroe bagger. Uh, he has many under his belt and I, I can't actually 
uh, recall how many it is, but I know he's down to the very sort of uh, more difficult ones now. So I think he'll be quite pleased that I've mentioned him today. And he, he's, he's taken on some quite challenging summits, usually to my mum's horror, as he'll, as he'll say, ah, this is an easy one before they start off. Um, I may try to follow in his footsteps, but so far I've only managed a handful of these walks. There's no doubt that as a society we have become much more reliant on cars in recent years. Even for short distances like taking our children to primary school eh, or going to the local shops. I believe that a year of walking well publicised will encourage more people to walk these short distances as well as raising awareness of how enjoyable walking one of Scotland's hills or Monroe's or any of the, the great eh, walks that we have can be. I hope this is a, an overall consensual debate and I hope it is something that we can get behind. It's clear that organisations and initiatives such as those I have mentioned will play a vital role in helping us to achieve this goal and get everyone who can out to enjoy walking. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. And I think having mentioned your father, you're guaranteed trifle now. So I now uh, call Margaret Mitchell to be followed by Elaine Smith. Miss Mitchell, please. Presiding officer, I welcome the opportunity to acknowledge and pay tribute to Paths for All for the excellent work it has carried out over 20 years which is indeed a real milestone. I also congratulate Fulton McGregor for tabling this motion and in doing so, highlighting the work of staff and students at the Coatbridge campus of New College Lanarkshire. This campus successfully merged into New College Lanarkshire in 2004, joining with the other main campuses of Cumbernauld, Motherwell and Kirkintilloch. As such, as I learned on a visit earlier this year to the Coatbridge campus, New College Lanarkshire, NCL for short, now provides almost two thirds of the further and higher education provision in Lanarkshire and de delivers qualifications to almost 27,000 students. And as the motion states, the Coatbridge campus, working in partnership with Paths, Paths for All, has unveiled the new Walk This Way, walking routes in Dunbeth Park in Coat Bridge. These newly designed walks in the park are graded and colour coded. So for example, the blue route is nothing point five miles in length, the yellow one increases to nothing point seven five miles, and then the yellow route walk increases to one mile. So clearly, people can start on a shorter route and then gradually increase the distance while enjoying different aspects of the park. The three walks within Dumbeth Park are included under the generic name of Coal Route to reflect Coat Bridge's coal mining history. And in two of NCL's other campus areas, a steel route is to be located in Motherwell and an iron route in Cumbernauld. All three routes have been designed by creative arts students under the Paths for All Walking for Fitness programme. That Paths for All has reached its 20th anniversary is a testament to the impact this charity is having on the everyday lives of people across Scotland, encouraging them to get out and get walking in the interests of fitness and health. So it comes as no surprise that Rambler Scotland was one of the founding partners of the Paths for All partnership and has maintained a close relationship with the organisation over the last 20 years. And just to make quite clear the advantages of walking, these include not only physical and mental benefits, but it is also a free and accessible pursuit which in turn helps to counter loneliness, especially when undertaken as part of a walking group. However, I want to concentrate for the remainder of my comments on Dumbeth Park itself. As a native of Coatbridge from the Cliftonville area where the park is located, I fully appreciate just what a pivotal role it plays in providing leisure pursuits in the area. By way of background, the park dates back to the Victorian era and was gifted to the local community by the Baird family in 1887. At that time, the park as we know it was surrounded by fields and partial marshland. But by 1940, the area which covers just over 11 hectares hectare, um, was surrounded by housing on three sides as a result of the industrialisation of Coatbridge. The park has five entrances, 
one of which provided a shortcut for me as I walked home from Coatbridge High as a pupil. I thought you want to know that presiding officer as would the rest of the chamber. But yes, perhaps bring more your remarks a conclusion, please. Yeah. Thank you. Perhaps more importantly, today it includes bowling greens, all weather football pitches and uh, three rugby pitch and uh, three rugby pitches and a fence children's playground. So in conclusion, there is absolutely no doubt that Dumbeth Park is a well-loved and well-utilised green space which now has the welcome addition of the coal route to encourage people of all ages without financial costs to engage in a healthier lifestyle. Thank you very much. I call Elaine Smith, be followed by Ruth McGuire. Ms Smith, please. Thank you, President Officer. Can I congratulate Fulton McGregor on securing this debate on the importance of walking for health, which is an issue I'm sure we can all agree on. Um, Dunbeth Park is a place that I'm very fond of, as Fulton McGregor pointed out. I lived nearby as a child in a tenement with an outside toilet. My husband and I then bought our first flat close to the park, happily with an inside toilet, but no heating. Um, and I currently live in the area happily with both an inside toilet and some heating. So uh, I, I, do, um, I do appreciate the park having had a history with it. And I'm also a member of Dunbeth Bowling Club, which as Margaret Mitchell pointed out, is based in the park. But sadly, what I don't do is walk in the park often enough. So having signed this motion, I do intend to make a New Year resolution to try and walk there at least once a week. I think it is a great idea to have walking targets in the park and I really do want to congratulate the students from New College Lanarkshire who, were working, who have been working with Pass for All to provide that incentive to aid uh, health, wellbeing and fitness. And by making exercise part of our daily routine, we can increase learning capacity, metabolism and overall feelings of wellbeing as well as helping with weight loss. But recent research has shown that built environment or urban landscape around schools and colleges can actively deter younger people from walking anywhere. And this is worse in areas which already suffer from deprivation. And we also know that those who come from a poorer background are more likely to be in worse health. And that makes it vital to tackle uh, the root causes of inequality in our communities. And it also means it's extremely important to properly maintain attractive public areas. Um, and I think providing information on the best walking routes can help to change habits for the better and encourage walking as well as other exercise. And this is all the more important because a recent report by NHS Scotland said that physical inactivity costs us around £94 million a year. Presiding officer, obesity was also in the news recently. The Scottish Parliament's Health and Sport Committee uh, have been looking into the issue. And last week at the committee, the Minister for Public Health noted that it is a significant problem. So obviously, walking and other exercise will help with this to reduce uh, weight. But with regard to fitness and health, I think an obesity plan for Scotland must also look at the ways that people are exposed to sugar and fatty foods, the cost of healthy and nutritious food. And I do want to make a mention tonight in a debate about uh, wellness and fitness for increasing breastfeeding because we know that young adults who were exclusively breastfed for three months and more are significantly leaner and they have less body fat than those who were not breastfed. So increasing breastfeeding along with other life habit changes such as encouraging walking and things like free nutritious school meals can have a massive effect on the general health of young people and last throughout their lifetime. What I would suggest is not would not be helpful is a punitive approach which is the the opposite to what has been proposed at the park and the walking routes, etc., we've been talking about. And I do note that the UK government recently dropped controversial proposals to withdraw benefits from people who refuse treatment for obesity. But I think the fact that that was considered is deeply worrying, and I think that we should concentrate on positive ways to help people and to encourage them in, in their fitness and to lose weight. Um, presiding officer, I think um, having a year of walking as outlined in the, the motion is a way that we can positively encourage uh, everyone, but particularly our children and young people, to, to concentrate on their, their health and fitness. So I think that's a really good idea. And part of that approach should be encouraging all of our schools to use their own outdoor space, as well as local parks like Dunbeth. And I hope that in the future, the initiative at Dunbeth Park will be extended to parks in Cumbernauld and Motherwell too, as mentioned by Margaret Mitchell and as planned by 
uh, the local colleges, uh, sorry, the, the, the college. So once again, can I congratulate Philip McGregor for bringing forward this important debate this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Ruth McGuire to be followed by Graham Simpson. Ms McGuire, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to start by congratulating my colleague Fulton McGregor on securing this debate and by welcoming the highly deserved parliamentary recognition that it accords to Paths for All on its 20th anniversary. As the time for New Year's resolutions approaches, I'm sure that many of us will be thinking about how we could be fitter and more healthy in 2017. This is an implicit recognition of the benefits to all of us of good physical and indeed mental health given the positive impact of physical well-being on our mental well-being. And it's for this reason that walking groups such as Paths for All are so important. As we've heard from contributions across the chamber this evening, the charity does excellent work in encouraging walking and good health throughout Scotland. And my own constituency is no exception. The KA Walk, which takes place across North Ayrshire, welcomes walkers of all ages and abilities and provides a supportive and welcoming environment for anyone who's keen to start walking. As well as allowing people to reap the benefits of being physically active, emphasis is also placed on the social aspect of group walking. Family and friends are encouraged to attend together and people have the opportunity to meet others from the local community. The Cunningham Ramblers are another group which do excellent work in my constituency. As the local branch of the UK-wide Ramblers Association, they organise weekly walks within Ayrshire at various levels of difficulty. As with the Paths for All group, groups, the Ramblers are opening, open and welcoming to all, and the focus is likewise as much on making new friends as it is on the health benefits of walking. And, Presiding Officer, I couldn't be more sure that the of the positive impact that good health and good relationships have on our well-being and happiness. A landmark study entitled The Origins of Happiness, published this week by a team of researchers at LSE, is the latest contribution to decades worth of research indicating that social and psychological factors are more important to the well-being of individuals than income levels. Indeed, as, as well we know through Although average incomes have more than doubled over the last 50 years, we're by no means happier on average. Though issues of income inequality and poverty are of huge importance and must be tackled, it is becoming ever clearer that our happiness is ultimately rooted in our physical and mental well-being, and that this in turn relies on regular exercise, healthy eating and positive, respectful and fulfilling relationships. In this wider picture of working towards wholesome and sustainable well-being and happiness and better physical and mental health, walking groups have a hugely important role to play. I welcome this debate in marking their role and look forward to supporting their work um, locally to me in the future and maybe even getting the chance to join them out in the fresh air in the lovely Ayrshire countryside. Thank you very much. Paul Graham Simpson to be followed by Alison Johnson. Mr Simpson. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I also um, congratulate Fulton McGregor on uh, bringing this debate. Um, it, it's important because it gives us a chance to highlight local uh, walking routes as Fulton McGregor has done, uh, but it also highlights the importance of walking in general uh, and getting out and about. Um, I have to confess I'm not familiar with the, the park that uh, Fulton McGregor uh, mentions, but uh, it has been an eye-opener to me uh, as a, uh, a new member for Central Scotland, uh, just the wealth uh, of uh, countryside uh, that North Lanarkshire offers. Um, I'm more familiar with South Lanarkshire, but North Lanarkshire has a, a great deal to offer. Um, I was uh, recently uh, visited uh, a couple of times uh, Barons Hall in, uh, in Motherwell, which uh, offers a, a, a great chance to walk for, for miles, uh, and there are plenty of other places as well. Um, last, uh, last week, um, I became the vice convener of the uh, Cycling, Walking and Buses cross-party group. Uh, um, Alison Johnson, uh, just behind Fulton McGregor there, is uh, one of the conveners. And we formed that group because it's really important to 
put this uh, issue on the map. It isn't just about walking. It's, about, it's basically about getting out and about uh, and becoming fit because most of us don't get enough exercise. Certainly before coming here, um, I did use my bike quite a lot. I walked as much as I could, but I found that I've, I've been getting far more exercise uh, since I've been spending more time in Edinburgh. It's um, a very friendly city uh, for walking and cycling. I first got into walking uh, at school. Um, I went to school in Carlisle, uh, and we had a base uh, in the Lake District in Little Langdale um, that we, we used to have uh, school trips to. Um, I met one of my former teachers recently, uh, my first form teacher at high school, and she was recalling uh, how she had uh, an absolute nightmare of a, a trip to that uh, school in Little Langdale. On a, it was her first uh, outdoor trip, uh, and it was horrendous for her but lovely for us pupils, even though it poured down. And I've loved walking and the outdoors ever since. Uh, I tried to get my own uh, children into it, into walking, uh, without much success uh, until they left home. Um, and then uh, they're, they've suddenly become fitness freaks, which I'm uh, very glad about. Um, if you look me up on Google, you'll find I'm a keen hill walker, and somebody did, uh, because just the other week, they asked me to become the species champion of the bilberry bumblebee, which is apparently found on Scotland's hills. So I'm uh, very pleased to uh, accept that uh, accolade and uh, promote the bilberry bumblebee. There, I've mentioned it twice. Um, now, you don't need special facilities to walk. We all, we all know that. Um, it's one of the easiest forms of exercise. It beats the gym. Um, but I'm also, as I've said, keen on cycling. Um, uh, just, uh, just a few weeks ago, I was very pleased to open with Humza Yousaf, um, the missing link of National Cycle Route 74, which runs from Glasgow to Carlisle. So we together opened the last bit of that, uh, and that was a very proud moment. I want to, at some point, cycle that whole route. Um, I've also cycled the route from Glasgow to Edinburgh, that uh, annual event. Um, I'd invite MSPs to join me in doing that uh, at some point. And if uh, Fulton McGregor fancies bagging a Munro or two, I will happily join him. Thank you. I was just thinking the things you learn from this chair about inside toilets and bumblebees and hills, my goodness, there's a no end to it. Alison Johnson, please. Um, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to thank Fulton McGregor for ensuring we debate this important issue this evening and for giving us the opportunity to congratulate Pass for All on a very important anniversary. The consequences of not moving gives us all the proof we need that the human body is designed to move. Our health depends on movement, yet in recent decades, physical activity rates have dropped off markedly. In recent evidence to the Health Committee, Ian Finlay from Pass for All said that over the past 50 to 60 years, we've done extremely well in designing physical activity out of our lifestyles. And he is quite right. And the cost burden, burden and the life-limiting impacts of increasing incidences of non-communicable disease means that it's essential that we make movement a priority. I was introduced today to the concept of movement snacks. Don't have a biscuit, get up and have a few steps. We only get one body for life. We need to nourish it, not just feed it, and we have to move it too. And there's a growing body of evidence that physical activity is a key component in a healthy life. And when it comes to physical activity, walking has so much to commend it. It helps your pocket, it helps your paunch if you have one, it helps your mind, it helps your heart. You don't need special gear, walking can actually save you money. Would you believe that two thirds of all journeys in Scotland under three kilometres are taken by car? That's a distance from here to the castle and back. For most people, that is perfectly walkable. So you can see how much potential we have to save money, to cut pollution, to get fit, to get happier. A two mile walk has the potential to change how you feel about your day. And while I live in Lothian with its excellent bus service, it's fair to say that on many occasions I beat the 35 bus up the hill and beyond. And that's largely because it's stuck in traffic, traffic consisting mostly of single person cars, traveling less than two miles. 
causing gridlock, costing business billions, contributing to air pollution, which is responsible for the deaths of 2,500 Scots each year, the same number as those who die prematurely from lack of physical activity. Ian Finlay also told us in committee that that physical inactivity is costing the NHS here £94 million per annum. We can do better. Um, I, I would ask the Minister in closing to address the issue of funding because of the, the very large transport budget, currently only 1.9% of that is spent on active travel. Presiding officer, if we get more people walking these manageable distances, we cut air pollution, yes, but we also reduce incidences of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, falls, depression, dementia, joint and back pain, and so much more. Walking is part of the solution. Walking has the potential to reduce loneliness and isolation. At a recent meeting of the cross-party group on sport, Dave Caesar, the CMO's clinical advisor, told us that on average, adults in Scotland are sitting for 5.4 hours each day in their leisure time. Now, if we here in Parliament add that to the time we've spent sitting in committee and in this chamber, that's quite a statistic. But if I invited you all to stand up here, we wouldn't be abiding by standing orders and the presiding officer might have something to say about that. But we can make walking meetings more routine. Culture change is required, but it'll be worth it. And as we heard from a learned professor at the Paths for All lecture, yes, walking is good for you very good for you. But if you walk in a green space, we have evidence now that tells us that that's even better. The Journal of Environmental Science and Technology confirms that green spaces have a sustained positive effect on mental well-being, and those accessing such space display fewer signs of depression and activity. I am closing, presiding officer. Presiding officer, Scotland's chief medical officer tells us that Doing something is better than doing nothing, that just 10 minutes at a time provides benefit and that it's never too late. So let us here show our appreciation for the excellent work of Paths for All by using those paths, by expanding those paths, by joining up those paths. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms Johnson. You've made me feel suitably guilty. Um, and I've got a New Year resolution coming on. I feel it coming on. So I now call on the Minister, please, to close for the Government. Seven minutes, please. Please don't tell me you do lots of exercise as well. I'm sure there's some porkies being told in here. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just start straight off. Okay, President Officer, I'd like to thank Fulton McGregor also for pro proposing this motion today and for the outline of the interesting and beautiful walks across his part of Lanarkshire. And I'll also put on record that my part of Lanarkshire also has lots of good walks uh, to take part in uh, too. Uh, and I'm immensely grateful to everyone involved at Paths for All for their 20 years of dedication, hard work and support which they have provided to the people of Scotland. And I'm delighted to see and know that some of them are in the public gallery this evening to hear about how they have positively impacted on many of our communities and the transformative work that they do through the power of walking. Paths for All, as we know, were formed in 1996 as a partnership of organisations including Scottish Enterprise, NHS Health Scotland, Visit Scotland and Sports Scotland, with the late broadcaster Magnus Magnusson, who is much missed as their chair. This organisation has certainly grown over the past 20 years and now consists of 28 partnership organisations with interest in our health, environment, infrastructure and economy. And they've worked with these partners with one unified purpose to utilize scotland's countryside our paths and our roads and our people to get everybody regardless of their age background or lifestyle out walking the four strands of their strategy focusing on walking for health active environments active travel and communications and policy indicate the scope and the impact their agenda can have for our country and as the many testimonies provided here today indicate, they and the local organisations and dedicated volunteers they work with have had a hugely positive impact on our communities. And I've enjoyed hearing about the work at Dunbeth Park and the supportive role of Paths for All in that development and hearing also about the walks in Ayrshire eh, from Ruth Maguire and others who have mentioned their local eh, areas eh, as well. Many members have discussed the benefits of walking for the health of our population. And medical evidence shows as us that regular involvement in physical activity reduces your risk of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease and dementia and a whole host of other com uh, conditions. 
Walking and being out in the open air has all, a number of other benefits too, getting us away from the TV screens and computers, getting us out into the open air and providing opportunities to socialise with family and friends. It also has the potential to increase our happiness, as, as Ruth McGuire outlined, and physical activity is also good for our mental health well-being. And I, I like to go out and reset, I think, my appreciation of the seasons, which I think all too often when we're cooped up indoors that we, we miss. And I'll also take on board the points that, that were raised by Elaine Smith regarding obesity and uh, just point to the fact that we'll be coming forward next year with our obesity strategy consultation. I hope she, she takes part in that and, and raises the issues that she mentioned around uh, breastfeeding uh, in, that, uh, in her response. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government's Active Scotland Outcomes Framework sets out our ambitions for a country where more people are more active more often through a range of opportunities and incentives for involvement in sport and physical activity. And we see walking as a key part of that vision. It's free, it's accessible, and everybody can do it pretty much anywhere. Points raised by Margaret Mitchell and others, and I'm pleased that Elaine Smith has resolved already to make use of the outdoor space on her doorstep. Now, Paths for All Active uh, Travel Programme, which provides financial support and training to enable enthusiastic volunteers around the country to set up walking groups, touch upon people from all walks of life. And some of the stories I've heard about these are truly uh, inspiring. They're transformative and they absolutely show what happens when you pro proactively work with communities, build on their assets and empower people to take control of their lives. Health walks, though, are just one example of the services that Paths for All help deliver to our communities. They also support the development of a nationwide walking football network, providing an opportunity for people of all ages and fitness levels to be involved in the beautiful game. They promote walking for people affected by cancer through Macmillan and provide strength and balance training to allow staff and care homes to support patients in this area, among a myriad of other activities. And of course, it would be remiss of me not to mention the Step Count Challenge, Path for All a Biannual Workplace Walking Challenge, a fantastic means of encouraging Scotland's workforce to incorporate working, walking into their day-to-day -day routines, a points that were touched upon by Alison Johnson. This year's recently finished Autumn Challenge uh, saw over 995 million steps being walked by a total of 716 teams. Now, my work to pers persuade my ministerial colleagues to enter the team for next year challenge is, is still ongoing, but perhaps if Fulton, if Elaine, if Ruth, uh, Margaret, Graham and yourself, uh, presiding officer, <laughs> uh, would like to set a good example uh, by making the use of the space outside our parliament. Perhaps next year we can uh, all sign up and show leadership across our parliamentary uh, colleagues. I see you're smiling there, presiding officer. Perhaps there'll be a nod towards the of agreement maybe as well. But however, I'll continue with my <laughs> remarks. Paths for All are also helping the Scottish Government deliver its active travel vision that by 2030, walking and cycling will be the most popular choice for short journeys. And we do have a, a record investment into active travel. I understand that you know, there are challenges there, and these are points that Alison Johnson will uh, legitimately raise, but certainly we have a record there of investing heavily in active travel, though we recognise the challenge to do more. Paths for All have also brought their dedication, expertise and skill and leadership working to bear with the, their support for the development and taking forward Scotland's national walking strategy and our wider ambitions for activating the entire Scottish population. And the progress of this strategy is overseen by a national delivery forum and Paths for All leadership has been crucial in driving forward that work of that forum. And the proof has been there for us to see in recent years. The number of people walking for recreation in Scotland is on the increase. The 2015 Scottish Householder Survey shows that 69% of adults in Scotland take part in walking for leisure, which is an increase of 5% from the previous year's survey. Putting that another way, in one year we have seen a very significant increase of around a quarter of a million people in Scotland walking for recreation. Now that doesn't happen by accident, it's through leadership, it's through the role of Paths for All, and it's along with our focus as a government on walking that has enabled that progress eh, to be made. But of course, there are challenges ahead with eh, more than a third of adults not currently meeting the recommended level of moderate to vigorous physical activity per week. So what for the next 20 years? Well, I think we would all like to see Paths for All continue on their uh, journey that they have made so far, their innovative thinking, their collaborative work, and continuing to work in partnership with like-minded or organisations to seize the opportunity that we have right now, created by Paths for All, 
all's enthusiasm, enthusiasm and focus uh, in place to target those hard to reach areas of the population. So I would like to conclude, um, uh, Presiding Officer, by also adding my thanks, my sincere thanks and appreciation to everybody at Paths for All and its staff, and also the many volunteers and partner organisations who are out there working locally to make um, uh, walking and activity levels, uh, po activity possible across our community and across our country. So we'd like to, I think, unified across the parliamentary chamber, wish uh, Paths for All a very happy 20th anniversary and raise a toast to the next 20 years, which I know will uh, ensure that Scotland's population gets more active uh, and reverses some of the health challenges that we have as a nation. So thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes the debate. Thank you, members, for an interesting debate. And I now close this meeting.